Hello everybody. Uh, today we're going to be talking about area and perimeter. These are both uh, things that you guys should be familiar with. Um, there's some extra things we got to do with them in ninth grade, but first of all, let's kind of review um, what area and perimeter are. So perimeter, let's say I have a square here, right? Perimeter is just the length of each side added together. So if this is a square, let's say this side is five, right? That means all the sides are going to be five, uh, whatever unit uh, measurement we're talking about long. So the perimeter would just be five plus five plus five plus five, which is 20. So perimeter would be 20. Okay. It's pretty tough, right? Area, there's a couple of uh, shapes we're going to be talking about in ninth grade. We're going to have rectangles or squares or whatever, you know, like the quadrilaterals. So for those, area is just length times width, right? Length times width or base times height. Should I call it base times height? It's the same thing. Okay. And that is for a square. So this is for the square rectangles. It's just the length times the width or base times height or whatever, right? And with triangles, the area is equal to one half length times width or base times height is how it's usually referred to in triangles. Um, but again, this is, you could also just think of the length times width, same idea, right? It's just, again, if you were to take like half a rectangle, you get a triangle, right? It's essentially that idea. You just multiply those two sides, divide it by half. Okay? So those are the formulas you need. So uh, before we get into it, let's, uh, let's talk, uh, let's say a little joke. So what did, let's see, let me think of this in my brain. Let's see. What did Aria say to the perimeter while they were arguing? Anybody know? <laughs> I'm trying to talk to you, but I feel like you're just going around my problem. Because, <laughs> you know, area is like the middle part and perimeters. That's okay. You guys all eye rolled at me. I know it. And that's fine. That's why I teach, right? So you can roll your eyes at me. Okay. So in ninth grade, we're going to focus on finding these things using a coordinate plane. And I'm zooming in here super quick or super close because it's kind of a small graph um, and you can't really see it unless we're super zoomed in. Okay, so and even then it's kind of hard to see, but this right here is a rectangle, okay? Um, and if we're on a coordinate plane, the units are just going to be the units of the coordinate plane itself, okay? So to find the perimeter, it's pretty tough, right? You just count how long the side is. Okay, so like this side is one, two, three, four. Okay, and since that is a rectangle, I know that its opposite side is also going to be four, right? Because they're the same length. It's a rectangle. Okay, and then this side is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, which means this side is seven. And that would be my side lengths. So again, all I would do to get my perimeters, just add them all together. So seven plus four is 11, and then 11 plus 11 is 22. So perimeter, 22, okay? And then for the area, it's just length times width. So area is gonna equal my length, we'll call seven, and width four, doesn't really matter which I call which, but seven times four is 28. So area is equal to 28. So my area is 28, and that is super tough, right? <laughs> okay, let's try another one. Let's look at number three. So this one, we have a length or width or whatever of two, okay? So those sides are both two. And then this one is one, two, three, four, five, okay? So again, for perimeter, you just add them all together. So five plus two is seven, seven plus seven, 14. So perimeter is 14. Whew, that was tough. <laughs> okay, then area is just 
the length times the width, right? So five times two, which is 10. Okay, so the area is just gonna be 10. So that one has a longer perimeter than area. It's kind of a skinny shape, right? Um, and that's pretty much all you're doing with the, the rectangles and stuff today. Not too tough, right? But we are going to have triangles on here today. And that's going to be the one you guys are all going to love to death. Okay. So let's look at a triangle. So these are all right triangles. So you should be really easy to find the base and the height, right? So when you're finding the perimeter or the area, let's do the area first. It's actually, funnily enough, going to be easier. So remember area was one half the base times height, right, for a triangle. So triangle is one half base times height, or length times height, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so on this triangle, this side is one, two, three, four. Okay, and then this side is one, two, three. Okay, now with these problems, I can count and get the side lengths if they are a vertical or horizontal length, okay? However, we cannot count diagonally, okay? It's not gonna be accurate. So we have an extra side over here that we don't know the measurement of, okay? I don't need it for the area, so let's do the area, then I'll come back to what we do for the perimeter. So for the area, it's gonna be one half, four times three, okay, or three times four. It doesn't really matter the order once you multiply it. So four times three is 12, and then cut that in half. Area is gonna be six, okay? So the area of this triangle is just gonna be six units long, okay? Now, to get the side length of this um, diagonal side, we're gonna have to reach back to our knowledge from math eight from last year. And we're gonna have to use the Pythagorean theorem. So Pythagorean theorem, this is like the fundamental theorem that kind of like um, is like the founding thing of an entire subject of math, trigonometry, which you guys will get into next year. Um, and basically it's like how we figure out distance mathematically. So all the things that require distance all are going to involve triangles, essentially, because that's essentially how we have learned to figure out distance. And it's because of this theorem, um, we know that if it's a right triangle, that A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. Now, if we're looking at a right triangle, here's my right triangle, right? Here's the right angle. So this would be like A, this would be B, and then that long diagonal side, the side that's opposite the right angle, that one right there, is always gonna be the C, okay? So for today, the longest side is always gonna be the side we don't know, because they're gonna be set up so that the right angle is right there, so you can count the vertical and horizontal leg, and then all you have to do is plug them into our formula, okay? So this is how this is gonna work. Those were both, that was four and three, right? So I know four squared plus three squared is equal to C squared, whatever that side is. This is gonna be C, right? So I square those two numbers, four times four is 16, three times three is nine, okay? So 16 plus nine is 25. Now, I'm not quite done, right? This is equal to C squared. I need just C. C all by itself, not C multiplied by itself. So how do you undo a square? Well, we're also gonna go back to eighth grade math for that, right? I mean, this was all part of the Pythagorean theorem unit, but we also did it last year where we talked about roots. The roots, the square root, is the opposite of a square, right? So if I square something, like square right there, the to undo that, I would square root it. So if I want to get C by itself, I would square root it. And if I square root that side, I have to square root this side. 
So essentially, I just need to find the square root of 25. So in my calculator, 25, or sorry, you gotta push the square root button first. So you push second, okay? And then you push the squared button to get the square root. So second, square root, and then you type in 25. And I'm gonna get five as my answer. So C is going to be five. So five is equal to C. So I know there's not a lot of room here, but this is where it's gonna become five, okay? So now I can find the perimeter, right? Four plus three is eight, or sorry, not eight, seven, plus five is 12. So perimeter is gonna be 12. Okay, let's try another one. So let's uh, look at the next one down here, number 15. It's a bigger triangle. So I'm gonna count my side lengths first. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That side is eight units long. This one is one, two, three, four, five, six. That one is six units long, okay? So I can easily find the area, right? Area is gonna equal one half um, times eight times six. So eight times six is 48. And then divide that by two, you're gonna get 24. So area is 24, okay? But then I need to figure out the um, long side here, right? So again, these two sides squared are gonna equal that long side squared. So eight squared plus six squared is equal to C squared, okay? Eight squared is 64, six squared, and again, that's just multiplying it by itself, right? Eight times eight, 64. Six times six, 36. Equals C squared, and then 64 plus 36 is 100. Okay, and then we would just square root both sides. Last thing we do is square root. You'd be amazed how many people will write 100 there and not square root it. And the square root of 100 is gonna be 10. I just pretend I put that in my calculator. It's gonna be 10. Okay, so 10. So my perimeter is just eight plus six, which is 14, plus 10 is 24. It's a nice, even triangle bit, right? Both area and perimeter are 24. Okay, then let's try another one. Let's try, ooh, let's do this one. 21 is right there. Okay, so I wanna do 21. Come on, line up. Sorry, there we go, 21. So, first thing we're gonna do, Count my units for the vertical and horizontal legs. So one, two, that one's two units long. And then one, two, three, four. That one's four units long. Okay, so two and four. So to find the area, it would be area is equal to one half, two times four. Well, two times four is eight, so half of eight is four. So that one has an area of four, okay? Perimeter, now we set up our problem, would be two squared plus four squared um, equals C squared, okay? Two squared is four, four squared is 16 equals C squared, so 20 is equal to C squared, okay? So then we have to square root, and I'm gonna plug this one in the calculator because you're gonna see why. So if I square root 20, uh, can you see? Yep. Square root 20. I get that right there, which is what we call radical form. Um, if you haven't learned it yet, you're gonna in the near term. Okay. Um, that is like the most accurate way to write um, something that is a square root that's not a nice number. Okay. But we're not gonna use that. We're gonna use the decimal form. So if I get this as an answer, I am gonna convert it to a decimal. So decimal button, right there, right? Right above the enter button on your calculator. So you're gonna click that, and it's gonna turn into 4.47, and we're gonna round it to the nearest tenth, because that's what the directions say. 
So again, the tenth is the first decimal spot. So if the second decimal is five or greater, you'd round that one up by one. Okay. So seven is greater than five, right? So we're going to make that 4.5. So C is going to be 4.5. So this is 4.5. So for my perimeter, it would be 2 plus 4, which is 6, plus 4.5, which would be 10.5. Um, so perimeter, 10.5. And we'll get decimals and stuff today, um, but that's just essentially how you do it. And that's the last tricky thing is you, you will get some decimals. So just make sure you convert it to a decimal um, if your calculator doesn't do it already. Okay. Shoo. Oh, man. And let's end on a sneeze. So <laughs> if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, uh, talk to your teachers. We're here to help, and I will see you out there.